Oh, thank God, this season's almost over. What a hellish season it has been. Let's see if we can get off with one more W and just draw a line on the sand. Hey guys, what's up? Irish Emerald here and welcome to our final week in the UBL this season where we are going up against Josh, aka Ultra Player, or Ultra Player aka Josh, coach of the West Virginia Minios. If you're not familiar with Ultra Player's channel, link to that is in the description down below. He's been around for, oh he's part of the furniture at this point in the community, like he's been around for so long. So if you, got, if you guys are into draft, you probably would have heard of him or his team name. So definitely looking forward to Ballum. I think this is actually the first time we've actually been able to score up against each other. Like we've been like in like some leagues together, but we've never actually squared off against each other. So this is the first time I think we're actually getting a properly square off. So this should be interesting. And Josh actually has to win to get playoffs. He kind of has got taken a little bit of a tailspin towards the end of the season and he needs to win. On paper, I'm a great matchup. I've been piss poor all season. Bar week one, this is ideal for him to be able to kind of come in and be like, oh yeah, grab the win, into playoffs, here we go. But, we're not going to let him just get off the hook that easy. Now before I dive into the teams, whatever, I want to give a huge shout out to Root and a huge shout out to Aquarius. Root ha came in, stayed to my DMs, this two day as I'm recording, uh, to help me out with the team. I had the team, like, a draft of it done, and he just came in, looked over it, did some major tweaks. Gave me a bollocken for wasting EVs in certain areas as well, at particularly level 50, because I was so used to doing my team building in level 100 for FIFA that I'd forgotten some of the basic fundamentals for EV for level 50. So, came in, gave me a bollocken, well, you know, he was being nice, but you know what I mean, he came in, really helped me out. And then again, huge shout out to Aquarius as well, who has agreed to help me out on a more long-term basis with trying to get myself up and running. There's a lot of you know work that needs to be done with getting me back to where I was, to where, uh, what's it called, from where I am now to back back to where I was, and she has agreed to come on and help me a lot more uh, in a more long term fashion. So huge shout out to her, and she also looked over the team and she's helping us out with our new league as well, the CLTU, which you guys would have probably seen up on the channel at this point when this video is out. So huge shout out to them. But yeah, ultra players team, as you can see for me here now, consists of Aegislash, Galarian Zapdos, Cinderace. Galarian Weezing, Rotom Moe, Vaporeon, Aselgore, Misprit, Sandaconda, Guzzlord, and Porygon. Now he's got a one big, big threat for my team. It is huge. And that is the Galarian Zapdos. If anyone's not familiar with it, it's fighting flying, 125 base attack, 100 base uh, speed. It's an absolute disaster to uh, against my team. We just do not deal with it. Like, do not. The coverage that the Galarian Zapdos gets is insane. We are not able to have a dedicated Pokemon that's able to sit in front of it and be like, come at me, brah. We, no, we just don't have it. Uh, that is a major, major problem. And then the rest of uh, Ultra Player's team, uh, Josh's team, you know, he's got a couple of interesting things. He's got the Age Slash, which, you know, he's used quite well this season. And that's a big, scary threat, but I think we can cope with it. And then he's got like, he likes a big pour on that is quite, you know, that can be quite bulky. He's got the Sandicon, which is used quite regularly as well. And he's got Cinderace. Now he's only brought Cinderace twice and he may or may not bring it. I don't think he will, but Cinderace is, you know, quite problematic as well. But yeah, that's his team and he does need to win this week, guys. So he's gunning for it, but let's, let me break down what I'm going to be bringing. So again, who shout out to Root, Aquarius and the rest of my front office for helping me with this week. This week is going to be a lot different. A lot, lot different. You're going, to, you're going to be seeing things that I haven't done in a long time. We've optimized an awful lot of EVs. I'm a lot more happy with my prep. I think this is probably the best I've prepped since my return. And I didn't even do a mock battle. Normally I mock battle and get it all out of the way. But I just caught a mock battle this week. But I think the prep we have this week is quite exquisite. So anyways, as you can see on the screen, we have Darmanitan first. Uh, with Choice Scarf. Originally it was going to be Choice Ban because Josh's team does not deal with Choice Ban and Darmanitan at all. At all. But I made the late decision because, as you can see on my team later on, I brought Nido King, but uh, Nido King ends up doing roughly the same amount of work that Choice Ban Darmanitan does. So I figured let's just pause on the Nido King and bring the Choice Ban, or sorry, bring the Choice Scarf on Darmanitan because I need something that's able to revenge kill non Choice Scarf Zapdos and something that's able to revenge kill other Choice Pokemon that 
Josh may bring. So the Diamond, I elected to bring Choice Scarf because it's an easier Choice Scarf than the Nidor King. And then we have Fire Punch there in order to help us late game uh, have a stab move that is not going to wear us down wear us down because if I have to rely on flare bits and there's four Pokemon we have to beat. I'm a little bit more nervy, but if I got Fire Punch and everything that's within range, I'm a lot more happier. EV wise, you see we have 164 in speed. You're probably wondering what that is for. That is for Rotomo. Rotomo has the potential to maybe speed force us to be at a speed tier where we cannot run Adamant. So if he's like a really offensive Rotomo, he might just bring enough. It might bring enough to be able to force Adamant Darmanitan. Now it's I'm probably being overly cautious there. I could have ran Adamant because we wouldn't actually outspeed it, but I just want to be especially cautious with this. So I ran enough speed to make sure that if he's running the minimum amount of speed to force us to be Adam and Dam, uh, Jolly Jam Manhattan, that we do not get caught with that. And that's what that speed is there for. Next up, we're bringing Bellend that bronze on because honestly, it's been a Bellend all season. It's done one week's work and that's about it. And other than that, it's been a bit wishy-washy. So bronze on's coming again this week. This is going to be our dedicated wheezing answer. The Galarian wheezing is a sl slight problem for us. It's able to kind of come in and out, take a lot of hits. I don't really like that. I want to be able to make sure that we can get Weezing removed as easily as possible. So we're bringing the bronze on this week. Psychic, Stealth Rock, Toxic and Earthquake. The Earthquake is for the potential age that switch in. As he kind of goes lot later on in the game he, and we don't reveal Earthquake, he may want to be thinking, okay, I can bring age slash here, get a hit off, etc. I want to punish him for that, especially if he reveals that's the switch in early. I want to punish him for that. Now I need to be careful. I want to make sure that he's not weakness policy or any kind of dirty shenanigans like that. But... That's where we're going with. You're probably wondering, as you see, they were full speed depth to be able to deal with the Weezing. You're probably wondering what the 20 uh, EVs is in a special attack for. And that's for us to be able to kind of scout what Weezing that might be there. If he doesn't have plus speed depth nature, like let's say zero investment with a uh, zero investment uh, speed depth, then we're going to two shot it. But if he's got the, if he's running zero speed depth investment with a speed depth plus nature, we get. We can kind of scout that with the 20 EVs there. That kind of gives us that little bit of nugget of information as we are in the battle. So that 20 EVs is just a small sacrifice there to be able to give us that little information. And that's what we're running with on this bronze on. After that, we got Milotic. And I'm actually proud to say this is, this is you know, the EVs on me. But, uh, you know, the front office definitely helped me out with what, you know, kind of mood set to uh, bring on Milotic. So it's been, a, it's been a joint effort this week. It's been a really, really tight, good joint effort. But... I'm really proud of myself with these EVs because I haven't done this in a long time and I'm like, yeah, I did good. <laughs> but anyways, to, uh, let me look at the moveset first. It's sub, toxic, skull, recover. It's to sit in front of Vaporeon, get a sub off, toxic to Vaporeon. Vaporeon isn't going to be able to break our sub and then I'm able to just kind of be a nuisance, really. Now, he could do probably something similar with his Vaporeon, but I have a feeling that if my life can kind of come in, we're just going to click sub first and worry about things later. We can definitely click Toxic in front of Vaporeon too, if we kind of suss out that he's some sort of uh, subset, but he's not going to be able to break our sub, and we can just kind of sit in front of the recover and all that kind of shenanigans. And we have multiple opportunities to get to uh, sub off on this matchup, which is really slick. We have 236 HP to give us 200 HP, 202 does nothing for us, uh, sorry, 252, with two, uh, which gives us 202 uh, what you call HP, does nothing for us this week. We don't get enough with sub with that, we're not going to get like an extra point of HP, so... We have to, uh, we just go with 200, that's all we need for the sub. So we have a 50 HP sub in front of us when we do click it. I'm running enough spadef to make sure that Cinderace with high jump kick does not do more than 37.5% at most. It's not, it's not able to do that much. So that means that if we go into Cinderace and he clicks high jump kick, he's not gonna put us within a range where he gets two high rolls and we cannot sub. We can go in on Cinderace, click sub, uh, uh, click sub on the second high jump kick and we will always get that sub off. So that's the reason why I put in that amount of sp uh, defense EVs. Spadef wise, I'm just going to jump to Spadef really quick. Spadef is there to make sure that a choice specs non boost, a non uh, special attacking nature, Age Slash cannot two shot my melodic with a Shadow Ball. That's what that is for. Then I have the 12 in speed to make sure that we're not being spec prepped. And I have the 12 in special attack, just as a little bit more damage. Right, after that, we have Hydreigon. We have Hydra and Hydreigon this week. And I know this has got mixed feelings with some of you guys that, you know, it hasn't been doing much work this season. But hopefully it does enough this this week to get us through. e belt Dark Pulse, U-Turn, Roost, and Defog. We're running a very bulky set this week. Like, we don't do enough to really be running, like, a lot of, an awful lot of attack. It's hard for us to be able to set up a nasty block because we're not going to be able to break through the 
wheezing. I was thinking maybe we run that D-Dan set again, but doesn't quite... Like, it's just kind of a little bit more difficult because realistically we'd have to run two D-Dances to make it out to be the choice of Zapdos. So it's, you know, it, it was a little bit more trickier, but we do need this thing to be able to deal with the Age of Slash, and that's what it's primarily here for. And this also helps us deal with the Sandaconda and a couple of other bits and pieces, the Rotom Mo. Rotom Mo is a big problem, so it helps us deal with a couple of those Pokemon like that that's very, very useful. Uh, Dark Pulse is there, as I said, for the Age of Slash, and just general really good all-round stab move. You turn for pivoting, and then Roosty Fog support moves. Beautiful. You probably look at the EV wise, and uh, we have 44 speed EVs to make sure a 252 Adam Sandaconda never outspeeds us. If it's jolly, that's fine, because you know we're going to be able to just take a hit from that, you know. So that's not too bad. But to, uh, if it's 252 Adamant, we can definitely outspeed it. Then I have 204 HP, obviously, because so the, the rest is dumped in HP. Uh, two, 252 in special attack with the modest, and then the, the remaining EVs in defenses just to give us an extra little bit more bulk, and that's that. Next up, I bring in Clutch the Needle King this week. And as I said earlier on in the video, this Pokemon is here for our wall breaking ability. I was originally going to go Scarf, but you know, it was pointed out that we don't really like how we have to lock ourselves into a move here because it would always give Josh momentum because he's got several po he's got Pokemon that are immune to poison and he's got Pokemon that are immune to ground types, to ground type attack. So that makes it a little bit more difficult for us to be able to kind of pivot around and lock ourselves into move and hope for the best. So, and then we're always predicting. We're always predicting and we're predicting too much. So I totally got the point. And then when I kind of re-examined the calcs, the life orb uh, is really, really nice. So we went with life orb this week. We got surge wave, earth power, and the bolt beam. Perfect. It hits everything. The speed, we have enough speed to be able to out speed a 252 Mesprit if he wants to come. If he wants to bring an offensive Mesprit, let him come. We have enough speed to out speed it unless he's scarfed. Then the rest is put into, we have 252 in special attack, and the rest is just put into bulk. And last but not least, uh, we have our Tapu Coco, and this is the best Galarian Zapdos answer we have, right? Now, Galarian Zapdos gets the coverage to hit every single Pokemon we have. He has the fighting, the flying coverage that hits everything. He has dark coverage to hit the bronze on. He has bulk coverage that hits the bronze on as well. He's got ground coverage that hits the Tapu Coco. He's got everything, right? He, he like it hits it hits everywhere, right? And it hits like a truck. So regardless, we're in trouble. And I think he, I think he gets like covers. Uh, yeah, the coverage he gets to do, but like it's just yeah, it's it's we're in trouble, right? But this is our best bet, right? Because Coco's able to live every single coverage move that he'd want to bring bar ground, right? So that's fine. We're gonna we we're gonna we're gonna be able to deal with that. So we're rocking our Thunderbolt, U-turn, Roost, and Bolt Switch. We have enough speed to be able to outspeed a non-choice scarf. Galarian Zapdos, which is beautiful. Then we have the Thunderbolt to be able to hit Pokemon really hard, and U-turn both switch to be able to pivot. Roost be able to heal off our damage that we're going to be taking. And the leftovers is passive recovery. I could have gone Rocky Hammer, but I figured no lefties, just get that passive recovery throughout the game. It's going to be really, really nice for us. This should be it. I think the Scorching Sands, if it does come, uh, not Scorching Sands, sorry, Stomping Tantrum, if it does come and does hit us, we should be able to live one, even with Choice Band. So it'll help us scout what this uh, Galarian Zapdos is as the game goes on. But yeah, that's the team. Let's get up into the battle. All right, guys, here we are in the battle. Uh, okay, so he's brought the AG. That was expe I was expecting that. The Rotomo. He's brought the Vape. He's brought the Sandaconda. He's brought the Zapdos. And he's brought the Mistbird. So he's kind of brought most of what I thought he was going to bring, which is nice. Those of them were going to win anything, but he's brought most of what I thought he was going to bring. The, um, he might leave with the Galarian Zapdos, which is a little bit scary. Uh, if I truth be told, you guys, I really want to leave my bronze on here, get rocks up. I feel like he might leave with his Mesprit and just try and get a... And just and just try and either go for Taunt or U-Turn or something shenanigans like that. So I think if we leave with our bronze on, I think that's kind of relatively fair. And we should be able to get rocks off and see what happens and go from there. I don't want to leave my Coco in case this guy got, he's got some... Weird shenanigans go on with an anti lead Coco, and I need to keep Coco in the back for that Galarian Zapdos. I just we, as I was saying at the start of this video, Galarian Zapdos runs over my team, so I gotta keep my answer for deep, 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 deep in the back, deep, deep, deep in the back. But anyways, yeah, good luck, have fun, Josh. Hopefully, uh, we hopefully we got the win, and uh, hopefully we have a nice clean battle as well. No hacks, none of that kind of shenanigans. He want to um, oh, there we go. I was there thinking he didn't want to hurry up with that uh that timer, but there we go, perfect. We're in here now. And if you haven't checked out Josh's channel, make sure you do so in the description down below. Links to his channel and all the other coaches are down below. Right, let's see what we are rocking out with. Give me, um, 
Give me, give me some taste. The income's mandate. That is the Santa Clan there. I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. I kind of just want to get my rocks off here. Like, really quick, just get my rocks off. Now, rocks are very important. I need to get Aegis Life down to 8% to make sure I guarantee to be able to kill it with my Hydreigon. Words. <laughs> hey. Uh, it also just gradually just chips away at the Zapdos if it's not heavy duty boots. Which is what I really need that. I do really need to get the uh, Zapdos really worn down. I mean, he's got that Rotomo or whatever in the back. That's fine. To defog. Like, that's just going to give me a free play to bring in the Nido King at some point, which is what, which is really nice because Nido King is a nice wall breaker this week. But Gen rocks up, puts an awful lot of pressure on him. He might want to go into AG if he's really aggressive. If he goes into AG, that's really aggressive here. We have to go into my melodic. I can't just risk the Hydreigon on that early and I just scout what that AG slash is. If he goes hard into the Zapdos, that'll be a little bit wild. He's going to make a switch here. He's going to go hard into something. Uh, Mordred. It's the age slash. I was thinking he might do that. So at least I know what this thing is. Now I cannot afford to really give this thing a weakness policy just yet, right? If he's autonomized or something like that, then that's fine. But I can't really afford to give him that right off the bat. I can't afford to go into hard hydragon here either. I'm just gonna go out into my melodic and see what he wants to do. I'm gonna break up the calc as well. I need to kind of figure out what this thing is. Uh, but I'm happy enough that I got my rocks off, right? Like, I'm very happy that I, we got rocks off. He's just going to switch in here. Uh, what's he going to go for? He's going to go for a CC. All right, okay. And that doesn't do that much. I'm cool with that. I am quite cool with that. So we get this. We get. We see the CC. I'm going to get my lefty's recovery, which is quite, 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 quite nice. Quite, quite, quite nice. Now he might want to go into Rotomo, or he might want to go into his vapor on here. I am going to go for my substitute. I'm going to get my sub up and I'm going to force him to maybe try and figure out what he wants to do here. But I'm going to be able to, as he's going to go for his king shield. I'm cool with that. <laughs> Honestly, I'm cool with that. Just give me my, uh, give, give me my uh, sub. I'd be able to sit up behind it and then I'd be able to go for a scald. This next, fo this, follow this following turn. And we'd be able to just go for moves. Like, you know, so I'm really, really happy with that. That's a pretty nice exchange for me, I think. Because if he goes for a CC, he's going to be taking like a... Minus two Spadef skull, uh, Skulls. I don't think he wants to do that. I think he wants to go into his Rotomo here. And I'm cool with that. I'm cool with just getting damage off from that Rotomo and kind of sussing out what it wants to do to me and all that kind of jazz. And I would be able to get, get a free Toxic off on it. And then that will just continuously try to wear this thing down. So quite happy that we're sitting here behind the sub. And I never bring sub. As you guys know, I very, very rarely bring sub. So this is new to me. He stays in. He does, you know, try and take the hit there. As we are going to go, as he is going to look like he wants to break through my sub here with a Shadow Claw. Okay, so he looks like he's Fizz, for sure, as the sub phase. Okay, cool. I know he's a shield as well. So I know I'm happy enough with what he's set here, um, as he's, and his lefties. So I know what this Age of Slash set is. If I, if I can keep him down at that range, I'm very, very happy. Very, very, very happy. I am going to click the recover this turn in case he wants to go into shield form or goes down to Rotom. I would very much like to keep my melodic as healthy as I possibly can. Could have gone sub there. Um, Futaba is this Rotom Mo. That's okay. I'm my Hydreigon. I want to come in here every single time on this thing. So that's perfectly fine. We're just going to get our recovery off here. Beautiful. And I'm quite happy with that. We got like a nice little bit of intel there. And this thing is lefties. As my controller is just simmer down i'm in a fight here man um we're gonna go into my hydrogen every time here no problem no problem at all no problem whatsoever right quite happy so a slash is definitely within range of a dark pulse right definitely within range of a dark pulse quite happy with that we do see the leaf storm here he did quite a chunk there to my hydrogen he did quite a chunk there to my hydrogen has to be said uh, a, a bit more than what I thought he was going to bring. A bit more than what I thought he was going to bring. Uh, or going to do, I should say. Leaf Storm does. And we're one for one. Uh, so he did around. Yeah, he did. What's He did around uh, what he would be for max special attack. So he's max special attack. That's fine. I am going to go. Do turn here. I don't think he stays in. Uh, but he's max. As he's got T Wave. Uh, that obviously hurts us. It's not nice. 
So he's left his Ma uh, Leaf Storm, T Wave, and he's got. I think he's got max speed. I think he's got max speed, anyways. Uh, okay, knowing that we do get a slow U turn here, I wouldn't mind just going for another U turn, truth be told. I think he might want to go for a full switch, so I think I'm just going to stick to that plan. That T Wave is obviously a bit of a nuisance. I think he's going to go for the full switch. Now, I'm not too worried about that Rotom. I do have Darm. Darm can do work there, so I'm happy with that. I'm curious what he goes into here. If he's Misprit, well, I doubt he's Misprit. I think he wants to go into his Vaporeon. Truth be told, I think Vaporeon has to be the play there. So I think we can just U-turn in. If we get a U-turn off, can we please get the U-turn off? That'd be nice. Juvia is the Vaporeon. We're going to take a little bit of rock damage there too, which is very, very nice. Okay, all right. That's beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, I do not want to take an ice beam here. That is a stone wall fact. I think we want to go into my bronze on here. I think we have to go into bronze on. No wheezing this week, so bronze on is able to kind of come in and be on a little bit. I don't want him to go for the toxic and land it on my, um, as he goes for the flip joint, gets a bit of momentum. To be expected, to be expected, which is fine. But I do not want the melodic to be. So, uh, sorry, I, I, I like. What was I going with my train of thought there? Um, it was Mister. Okay, I can toxic this thing. He could also get his rocks off. What's more valuable for me here? What's more valuable to me here? There is a question. And uh, sorry, yeah, I didn't want my melodic to come in and take a potential toxic there. That was just not going to work out for me. And in any sense of the operation, like a not, uh, not one point. I do like going for toxic here. We're known as Misper a little bit, so that it gives Darm a little bit more edge. I do have Defog on Hydreigon, which we will be able to get rid of rocks. And I'm a little bit more happier to get rid of rocks now with Hydreigon because I've gotten the chip I needed on the Age Slash. So I'm a lot more happier with doing that than I was previously. So I'm happy, happier with doing it. Um, we're going to get a little bit of like, passive recovery there. Um, we're going to be pretty much up to full. Uh, this Mesprit might want to knock off here and that is actually quite disgusting for us and I'm not a big fan of that. I'm also not a big fan of taking a U-turn to the face here with my Hydreigon and basically allowing him to get a, like, a KO my Hydreigon for free. Uh, I don't really want to do that. I'd rather if we were to come in on the road of mow again, so that's quite valuable to me. You can make the argument that my Milotic... See, do I need Bronzong that much? I do not have Weezing anymore. So without wheezing need, or the need to break through wheezing, I probably do not need my bronze on just as much as I used to. So I could stay in, grab a psychic, just kind of suss out what he wants to do. I think my U-turn. I see the U-turn knockoff for me. There is the knockoff. Yeah, I didn't want. I just, I just wasn't a fan of having to take two hits there. And I'd much rather get this misbred chipped, just chipped, constantly just getting that chip, that chip, you know. Um, this misprit, uh, this misprit, uh, question time, what are you? So, it looks like to me that you are actually are physically offensive. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, I really, really, uh, I could go out to my melodic then, knowing that, but then he's going to get an awful lot of momentum there. I think I'm going to EQ, I'm going to go for the, I'm going to predict him to go for a U-turn, as he's going to draw, okay. All right, into Mordred. That's that's all right. Perfect. Don't mind that at all. Don't mind that at all. Rocks. Uh, so he's got rocks, and he's got. Oh, that's a nice little chunk of damage. He's rocks, and he knock off. Okay. Perfect. And he's physical. Perfect. Um, the, I think we can go out into my rainbow again here if he goes out into the modem great if he goes out into the as he, look, he likes to say it if he went out into the modem we just get hydreigon again which is i'm like yeah beautiful give me my give me my hydreigon oh not my hydreigon give me my uh hydreigon back in which is beautiful he is going to switch up the stance here and he's going to go for the shadow claw fine that's fine that's fine that's fine part of me would like a sub here Another part of me is thinking he might want to be a bit more aggressive and go for an offensive move in order to prevent that. Uh, I think I like the recover here more than any other play because 
if he goes into, I think he's going to hard into run to prevent me to being able to do shenanigans. And I don't like that. As he does go hard into Rotom. And he's going to take a little bit of rocks damage. As I'm going to go for that recover. That is actually getting more and more worn down. Very, very happy with that. Really happy with that. Truth be told you guys. As we get back up to full. Didn't want, I just don't want to reveal too much there. Like, oh sorry. I just didn't want to go behind the sub. And then giving this Rotom a little bit of too much freedom. Uh, he might want to go for the Volt Switch here. Uh, I know this thing is a lot more offensive than what we made it out to be. I think we could maybe go into my Needle King, but I'm not overly too sure. So I think we are better off being safe than sorry here and go into my Hydreigon. I, and in an attempt to maybe try and default these hazards away, because I don't want these hazards. If he has default on the Rotom, I am all up for him to just kick a default here. All, I'm all game for it, because I'd rather get the rocks off my side of the field. He does go for the v Volt Switch, which we do eat. That's probably going to bring him into the Mistbird here. I do want to get rid of these rocks. I have to think about getting back momentum in this game too, because he's got he's wrestled a lot. The double power on the Hydreigon, big, big issue. I'm not going to lie, that sucked. Uh, it would have been nice if I was able to get that slow U-turn off at least once. He brings in this Zapdos, and he's not Boots. Now, I think we have to go into my... Uh, do I want to go into Coco here? Yeah, I think we have to go hard into Coco here. We go hard Coco here. Um, so he's going. He's got into his Zapdos. Here's where we get to find out what he is. Here's where we get to find out what has he brought this week to be absolutely terrifying. What has he brought? What has he brought? Let's see. So we're at 155. He's brought. He's gone. Thunderous kick. And we eat that up. Uh, thunderous kick. We were down at 115. So 155 down to 115 is like nothing. I um, I think he may be. I think he might be scarfed based on that damage, which is really really nice. I'm a fan of that, and I do outspeed his whole team, so I can afford to go for a uh, like other than this thing. So other than this after. So I am. I'm gonna go for a roost, and then we're gonna try and pivot around that afterwards. So at least he now knows what the switch is, so we just gotta be a little bit careful with that. As he's gonna bring in the Mistbird. I am cool, because I'm just gonna roost, and then I know I outspeed this Mistbird. This Mistbird isn't gonna be too scary for me. So I'm quite happy with that. Knowing where the, what this Mistbird is, can I afford to give to go for a Thunderbolt here? Can I afford to go for a Thunderbolt in the, in the terrain and kill this? We potentially can. Now, if we go to the knockoff, that's a problem. U turn also has a chance to get. U turn has a chance to actually put this thing within, well within range. So I think we U turn. Because I think with the next toxic damage, if he stays in, he'll die. So I think we U turn him. I think that's the safest play. I think we just U turn, pivot around this misbred a little bit. There we go. That, that might be within range. It's definitely within range of rocks and toxic damage next turn. So this misbred is. Effectively death fodder, which is nice. Uh, he might want to go knock off. He might want to go U-turn. It again, bronze on. How effective is that for me? I don't know. Uh, if it, I think it would be nice. I do not want to. I don't want my Lolic to take damage here either or lose his lefties. So I think maybe bronze on is probably a better play here, just to keep my Lolic safe in the back. But. Okay, I'm, I'm happy that the Misper has been worn down. I'm quite happy. Uh, he's gone for the Zen Headbutt. Yeah, cool. You do eat that. And you go down. And Misper is dead. Beautiful. So we pick up that first kill. I'm very happy with that. That's, that is really, really nice. We got the Aegis Dash down quite low too. Very, very happy with that. Uh, it's gone reasonably well here. It's gone reasonably well here so far. What is he going to do next? He might go into Aegis Dash and then does he hard read that Rotom? That's interesting. Does he hard read Rotom here going into the Aegis, uh, with Aegis Dash? That's an interesting question because if he hard reads that, I wouldn't mind going into my Hydreigon here. Uh, if he hard reads and goes into Rotom. Now he might also pick Sh uh, Shadow Claw here. Hydreigon being paralyzed is a little bit of a nuisance. Bronzong can still do a little bit of work against the Vaporeon, Toxicate, that kind of stuff. And it can also, is also somewhat of another answer to coming on the Rotom. So I think we can bring in my Hydreigon. Just being paralyzed 
is a, just a, too much of a nuisance here. Now I can still roost off the damage, but we'll see. I'm gonna go into my Hydreigon. If he reads it, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, but I think it's kind of it's a fairly safe sack here to go for, and it gives me Needle King here if he if he picks me off. He does indeed go for the Shadow Claw. We do manage to live, which is nice. Which is nice. Which is nice. Which is nice. Um, I, I didn't know what he was going to do there. It was interesting. He might want to just go for another move here. I am going to go for the roost just to heal off. But in no way he's going to let this thing be for free. And I don't mind him taking this. Because I get I, I get my Nido King. And I'm very, very, very happy to get Nido King in here. Because like, what does he do um, to my Nido King? Like, you know, he has to make a switch then into something. So I'm like, yeah, give me that. Okay, so I'm very, very happy with that. I think it, I think we could potentially afford question time. Question time now. Uh, I think we could uh, we could probably go into we could probably go out into if you go into Nido King, right? He might want to go into Vaporeon because Vaporeon might be his main answer to us. The way I've seen it, I uh, I think Vaporeon might be the main answer. So if we go into Nido King, we could hard go into say something like Bronzon. Or into my melodic. If we go into my melodic, I can go for the sub, but that's going to put us back into that scenario again, which I'm not really keen on. If I go out into my Tapu Koko, Tapu Koko might be the best middle ground play here. I'm guaranteed to get my Lettuce recovery, and I will be able to get a T bolt off, and I will be able to kind of U turn around to Sandaconda. So I think that's probably our best bet. I think that's, this might be our best bet. As like a nice. Uh, mi easy middle ground play. Just get Coco in. He's gonna have to have a rethink here. He might want to go for a. I got because I've re only revealed uh, U turn here. He might want to go for the King Shields, which is fine. I'm gonna go T Bolt. If he hard switches out, that's fine. He does indeed want to go for that. Does indeed go for the King Shield. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. We're just gonna go for the T Bolt. Just gonna go for the T-Bow as he does King Shield, get a little bit of recovery off. Now, I feel like we could definitely U-turn uh, here. Right. I'd rather not. I'd, ra I would, I'd much rather not have to go for a Vol Switch. I think we can U-turn. So I'm gonna do the U I'm gonna go for the U-turn. And have him and force him into uh, switching out here. Because I don't think he wants this uh Aegis Dash to be worn down even more. He did the left to stay in. Okay, that's going to give me uh, my knowledge, so interesting. Interesting that he stayed in there. He was probably thinking he could probably live a hit, which is fine. Um, I have to go into my melodic, so I have to go into my melodic. And we have to have a think about what we want to do here. Have to have a think about what we want to do here. Uh, you definitely gone for a CC, I'd say. Shadow Claw, okay. That was a crit, was it? Okay, not it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. Okay, okay. Um, I have a feeling we can kick Toxic here. That's what my gut instinct is telling me. I think we could probably gamble for Toxic. I'm gonna go for the Toxic. I'm gonna go for the Toxic. I think he's gonna switch out to his... He stayed in! Okay. I didn't think he was gonna gamble that. Honestly, didn't think he was gonna gamble that. Did not think he was gambling that at all. Never, never did I think he was going to gamble that. But he, now he knows he has to be careful what he goes in for here, right? He has to have a real, real think about it. Uh, I have to click recover though. But at least he now knows like I'm carrying that toxic. As I am going to go for the recover. Give me my HP back. Give me my HP back. As he's going to go for another Shadow Claw. As he elected to... I suppose he's probably happy just to get the passive recovery here. But I'm I'm gonna go for the skull this turn. Like I'm not gonna think twice too much about it if he brings in the Vaporeon, so be it. I would speed it if he brings in the Rotom Mo, so be it. Um He's because I wasn't I wasn't too sure what I was wasn't to do there. Do I go sub this turn though? Part of me is thinking, yeah, I think we go sub. I think we're gonna gamble and go for the sub here. I think he might make the switch. He didn't, he's staying in. He's not gonna give it to me. Okay. Alright, he's not gonna give it to me. Interesting. He's just not giving me edit my sub. 
That was a crit. Okay, I'm over. I'm a lot more happier that they still took the crit from me, though. I'm a lot more happier with that. Oh, man, okay, that's this kind. It definitely does blow a little bit. There ain't, no, there ain't no denying that. I wouldn't. Do I gamble the scald here? Knowing the damage that we're kind of doing. I think I could go for a scald and recover. I think I can go for that combination. Or I can gamble the toxic. Because he might think I'm going to recover here. I actually do need Milo pretty healthy. So I'm going to just go for the recover here. As he decides to stay in. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Melodic is doing its work. It's doing its work. As he goes for another Shadow Claw. That was... No, it's not a crit. Stop it, right? Stop it. Please. I keep thinking that Shadow Claw is a crit, but it's not. We are clicking Scald. I am sick of this, right? It looks like he's just refusing. And he's getting all his HP back up while I'm trying to predict him. And he's like, oh, cool, bro. Um, so I'm just going to go for the Scald here. And just like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm clicking Scald. As he fucking withdraw. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. In comes the Rotomo. In comes this bad boy. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just gonna go for the scald. I can't stay in here. Like I just, I just can't afford it. We do grab a burn. It's fine. That's gonna nerf that uh, lefties just a little bit. That lefties recovery is gonna be nerfed just a little bit, which is nice. As you know, we know this thing's already like fairly offensive. He's got 252 speed and all that kind of jazz. I do have to keep an eye on the timer. I'm mean, like, I'm obviously trying to try and think through my plays a little bit more, but the timer is working against us. I think we could probably have to go out to my bronze on here. Oh, my Nido King. But Nido King's a little bit more riskier. Because he will get two shots off of me. So I think it has to be Bronze on. It's just the power on the Hydreigon just sucked. It just sucked balls. But we just have to play around it and try our best. This Rotom, if he goes for the Volt Switch and gets in Age Slash again. Fair enough. Does go for the Leaf Storm. We dodge. Doesn't do... I, don't, I honestly... Doesn't really matter to me too much either way that. Doesn't matter to me too much either way. We're going to get a little bit of a burn there, which is nice. Part of me is thinking Psychic. I think we need to go Psychic, as he goes full switch. Alright. Who do you go into? Who? Who? Who do you go into? Vaporeon? Sanaconda? Zapdos? Zapdos will get a free kill here, like. This thing. Okay. Alright. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I'm just going to go for the Psychic. I like that damage. That was a crit. Okay. Makes sense. Now, it might be Wish, Protect, Baton Pass. I don't know what this thing is yet. I need to kind of suss out. I am going to grab a Toxic on this thing. Because this allows me to stall out this Vaporeon a lot more. Flip turn. That should kill me. Does not. You've got to go out into Age Slash here. Surely. Surely you have to go out into Age Slash. You have no real other option. But to go out into Age Slash. Like you have to. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's it. There is the Age of Slash. Happy enough with that? I'm happy enough with that. Now, I could preserve this. I think we do preserve. I think we do preserve. This thing's got one other... This thing can still do a little bit more for me. So I'm going to go into my Melodic here. Because it can do just a touch more. It can just do a smidge more for me. So I am going to... I'm going to give it the opportunity to come in one more time. Sack it on the Rotom. But because if I can get it on the road, I'm getting my Needle King. Needle King will claim a life. That's what I'm. That's the that's the goal here. Because Vaporeon's after being weakened, so that's the goal. Is just try to get Needle King in, real careful, real sick like. We do get a bit of a hit there, but we do outspeed this thing. So I'm happy enough just to be able to kind of go for a recovery here. Maybe go for a scald. Do I want to go for scald? I don't think so. Age slash here. Man, this recovery is a little bit of a nuisance. Will not lie. Uh, I do want to click. Recovery here. No point me going for the toxic because he's got the Rotom toxic, so it's like whatever. It's like you know, uh, not toxic burn. So I'm not gonna be able to kind of like draw that in. So I'm just gonna go for the recover. He is just gonna go higher into the Rotom. Rotom's gonna he's gonna give me a free uh, Needle King switch here because I'm gonna sack the Bronze on, which is fine. If Needle King comes in on this Rotom, Rotom is going to be like I, I, it depends on what he brings in, right? Depends. I, if I was him, full switch is to play, right? Full switch is to play. Now, do I predict the full switch? Because he knows Bronze Song is there to be taken, right? Do I predict the full switch? Is it worthwhile? I do have to start making some aggressive play here. If I bring in the Volts, if I go for the Nino can predict the full switch, 
I can't, I don't think I can afford it. I think we have to set the bronze on here. I don't think I can afford Nido King just taking a Volt Switch like that. Don't think I can afford it, like, at all. Like, just not one bit. He is going to withdraw, and he's going to spring in Manda. Oh, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm okay with that. Because you're, like, the last remaining Pokemon I need, like, removed here, right? Like, you are quite literally the last main Pokemon I need removed here. Like, in this whole entire game. So I'm just going to bring in my Needle King, and I'm just going to take Ice Beam. Right, and if he's got the Archie Berry or whatever it is, so be it. Uh, right, I'm I am I'm just kicking ice mate. I just need this thing. I need this thing removed because if this thing is removed, you're scarfed. That is quite disgusting. That is quite quite disgusting. Okay, so the Sandaconda got me. He scarfed Sandaconda. Uh, and I wouldn't mind. I even said it. I even said it that the Sandaconda could be like, or someone did tell me the Sandaconda is a problem. But I am gonna go into my my Lodic because EQ was so free there because I lost Bronzon. Lost it so much. Uh, we're going to bring in my Melodic. And I am going to click sub here. And I'm going to just... Uh, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with that at all, you guys. At all. Now, Needle King's in the back still. And Needle King can still do a little bit of work. But uh, it all depends on the Zapdos. In comes this thing. I'm okay with this. Because he has to click the Vol he has to click a Vol switch or Leaf Storm to be able to break through me. Or T-Bolt if he has it. If he has it. So I'm happy enough with that. I'm happy enough to be able to just try and get like maybe two turns left of these. Get the couple of skulls off. Uh, Sandaconda beam where it's at is problem. Right. So I need to keep the Milotic around for that. At all times. We are getting this thing worn down. Which is very very nice. I am just clicking skull here. Just need to get damage off in this Rotom. And then it's a matter of trying to get. Um, as there's the rising voltage. Okay. Nice tech, nice tech, because I do have the electric uh, terrain. As that is gonna be our that is going to be our sub will down. As we get a little bit of chunk of damage there. Now losing Nido King and losing So Sanaconda is scarfed, right? How am I winning this game? How am I winning this game? There is the question. There is the question. Flareblitz does not do enough here. Does not do enough. Right? That's that's a stone wall fact. And I need this melodic healthy. Melodic, I have to rely on melodic. Do I live a hit do I live a hit here? Do I live a hit here? And can I recover off on it? That's that's what it's gonna come down to. If I live a hit here, then I just have to click recover. That's all I can do. I do not live Leaf Storm. I do not live least. So I, I think we have to... I think I have to go... I can't really go into the mountain. I have to go into Coco. I have to go into Coco. Coco's the only option because I just need... I need more damage off in the Sandaconda. And it sucks because this is my Zapdos answer. But I need the Rain... I need my life for the Sandaconda. And I need Darm. I need Darm healthy to win me this game for Flare Blitz. Because I have the damage off in Vaporeon. So I'm happy with that. I have the damage off in... Eight, well, Ace Slash doesn't live in anything. He's like, ain't living a goddamn thing, right? So that's not too bad. If he has, the, if he has the stomach tantrum, he brings in the Zapdos now potentially to pick me off. Manda, Manda's coming. Now this thing is scarfed, right? This thing is scarfed. This thing is scarfed. So I'm gonna have to. I can. I this, the thing here is, can I U-turn on this thing? Can I U-turn on this thing? 252 choice scarf. I'm just trying to figure out have I got the has, has have I got the speed. Uh, if he's running jolly, if he's running jolly, yeah, no, he's got enough to be able to uh, speed creep me. So that's fine. We have to bring in our melodic. That's why he's brought. He's brought enough to be able to speed creep me. So he has to bring 252 speed. I ain't allowing that. I ain't allowing. I ain't just not allow going to allow my coco to come down. So we ain't, we ain't living in EQ. Stonewall factor, guys. We are not living this EQ. That who are the GGs here? That's just a little bit too much damage, I think. It's a little bit too much damage, and might just be GGs. Might just be GGs. Uh, we unless we're able to break through with flare bits. 
I'm assuming that the Darmanitan against the Sandaconda. I'm gonna say he's got no HP investment. Flurbitz is a roll. Flurbitz is an absolute roll here. So we're gonna go onto our dam. This is screaming Scarf, by the way, but I have no other choice. Fl uh, the Fire Punch doesn't do enough. Has to be Flurbitz. Has to be Flurbitz every single time. Has to be. And we have to hope this kills. If this is not killed, it's GG's, right? Gone. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Right, now I gotta preserve. <laughs> I gotta try and wear down the Vaporeon just a little bit. Just a little bit. How come is this is Galarian Zapdos? Has to oh, no. Okay, alright. Alright, alright, alright. Okay, I see you. I see you. I see you. Uh, question. If I break through this, can I win the game with Coco? From there on out. His Pokemon. He's, we got to Rotom Low. I think we can. I, I, I Honestly, I think we can. I think if I click Flare Bits one more time, Coco might win us the game because it's still at such good HP. So I'm going to click Flare Bits again. And if he protect, if he wishes up, then we're going to go. We're, we're going right into Coco immediately. Goes for the fifth turn. That's fine. I'm on two. Oh my god, damn! You are a monster. Okay. So who do you bring in? Has to be the age slash for the shadow sneak, right? Ha has to be. Uh truth be told, I've absolutely no problem taking Flurbits here. Like no problem. If he picks me off the shadow. The Shadow Sneak, he has to go into, you know, like we go into Coco and then he has to make that pivot. And I have to make these decisions very quick because the timer is against me. So I'm just going to click Flare Bits again, let this thing go down and see what happens. He is just going to go for the Shadow Sneak. That's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine, perfectly fine. That's what's going to, that's that us going down there. But we might be able to kind of deal with the rest of his team. With the with Coco, I think. So I think we could probably do that. I think I can kind of come over here with Coco, and I can just roost this damage like this turn. As he either want to King Shield or do something else. So I think we just roost, get a HP way back up. Because I got the Sandaconda gone, to be pouring on as though the Zapdos is still a problem, but it's scarf. So I Coco should be able to wall that unless he's got the Stomp Tantrum. I'm just going to roost though, I need, uh, I need to get my HP back up. Game is not quite over just yet, uh, we're not in a great position, but we've gotten the damage we need. He has elected to stay in and gone for a move. This is interesting. Uh, we're going to be at max HP, he's going to go for the Shadow Claw. How much, are you, how much is that doing? That's fine. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I'm okay with going for T-Bolt now. I am perfectly okay with that damage. I mean, T-Bolt is, is, perf is perfectly fine. Uh, if he wants to go into King Shield, he can. Uh, I'm just going to T-Bolt here. Again, it's got to be super quick. I'm on 48 seconds, so I have to make sure. I have to know what I'm doing every single time. He's going to King Shield here. Yeah, he has no. He has to really. He has to kind of just eat, like because the timer is against me. Um, this is no problem if he like just stall him out. Stall me out because we just got to keep kicking moves here, really. Like you know, we just got to be super quick. Um, we're going to get Alexi's recovery back up. Just keep yeah, keep us going, keep us going. That's all anyway. That's all I really want. Uh, I'm clicking the T-Bolt again. Clicking the T-Bolt again. Now, I think he goes... Uh, he's going to go for the Shadow Claw here. I think he goes back into Shield. We roost. We, and we just keep... We keep, just keep going We just keep going with that uh, mantra, I think. I think. I think that is the plan. He goes to the Shadow Claw. That's going to do a tasty amount. I think he goes King Shield this turn. I honestly do think he goes King Shield this turn. Um, if he does, I do need to roost. I need to stay healthy. I need to stay healthy. So I'm just gonna, uh, yeah, I think he does King Shield, so I'm just gonna roost off. And let him think about what to do here. That's what I'm gonna do. Let him think about what he wants to do. That Scarfed Sandaconda is, was not nice. Was not nice. I would love, I just got too greedy because I just needed a Sandaconda gone for my Darmanitan. But once I saw the, once I saw the set, I was like, damn. And I, I, honestly, probably once we lost the Nido King, I should have gone straight into Darm. I should have done the Calc right there and then. And seeing, right, how much am I doing here? He elected to just not go for a move. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, okay, okay. But I probably should have calculated what the damage was. And like, right, can Nido King come in here? And so I can down come in here and just kill this thing. 
Can it come in and just kill this thing? That's what I was wanting to find out. Unfortunately, I do not know now. I do not know. Uh, I am just going to kick T-Bolt here. No, it's a pity about the timer here, you guys, because we could have had a little bit more fun with this, but unfortunately we are... I have to be very precise. Well, not very precise, very quick. As he does elect to go for the King Shield this time. Uh, I have no problem just kind of spamming two T-Bolts this ne these next couple of turns. I need to force him into like doing something. Like honestly, I need to force him into doing something. Uh, okay, so we see that because he does leave my Coco down at a certain range for his scarf, or if he has not brought the stomp tantrum from his uh, scarf, that does to kill me. So that's why he's probably most worried about. Now, it's, obviously, we've lost the terrain. That definitely does suck because we ain't doing as much. But we got to take T bolt here. I'm quite happy that the last three turns have basically taken us six seconds. So I'm like. That is, that's pretty beautiful in my in my mind. That's pretty beautiful. Now he's gonna go for another stance change, and he might want to go shadow claw here. He's never he is never ever going to go for anything else other than shadow claw. That must be a crit, right? No, it wasn't. Okay, that was just disgusting, disgusting damage. That was just disgusting, disgusting damage. I have to kick roost then again. I have to kick roost again because of that damage. I have to kick it. Because uh, I just won't live the combination of Shadow Snake and, and Shadow Claw at that range. And as well, I'm within range of a crit. And Shadow Claw is a high crit move. So I have to uh, I have to roost. I have to roost. He's probably trying to figure out what to do here. Because um, as he did, yeah, I was, I was thinking at some point he was going to get fed up with that. Because I, was, I wasn't quite being worn down by the timer enough to uh, be a problem. But I am going to roost off here. Now his plan might be Stomp a Tantrum into Aegislash. Fine, cool. That's cool. That's cool. If he go, if he does go with that, I am taking T bolt regardless here. Regardless, I am taking T bolt, and we're just. I just need to be uber quick with my moves. That's all. Uh, as all right, is he bandaged? Well, that thing's dead. That's cool. That's the Zapdos gone. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So the Aegis slash the Rotom, and the Vaporeon is all that is left. The Rotom has to kick the um, as inconsistent again. All right, okay. Interesting. I'm just kicking T-Bolt again, right? And we have to do it really quick, really quick, really quick. We just gotta kick T-Bolt again. As there's the King Shield. Understandable, understandable. Understandable. I think he's, I think, I think he's like, we have to try and sneak that timer away, which I'm like, that's fine. Cause he's probably looking at his squad and he's like, the Pearl is too low. The Age Stash isn't break through me. And he's probably worried that the Rotomo over time is not gonna be able to beat me. Because I'm going to be faster than Rotom Mo. So I, he's probably trying to figure out how does he break through the uh, Coco. Now I can probably afford two T bolts here. I can probably afford two T bolts. Barring a crit. Yeah, I can afford a second T bolt. I can afford a second T bolt. Cause, and he's in his blade form. So he has to go for his King Shield this turn. No doubt he has to go for his King Shield this turn. He's, at, he's too low to risk. Me taking a oh, taking a T bolt, so I'm just going to kick T bolt again. He's too low to be able to risk it. Yeah, knew it. I knew he was just too low. He can't risk that T bolt. He can't risk it. So we're just going to kick it again the following turn. Following turn, we're just going to kick it again. That's all we got to do. Just kick it one one more time. Do you know what? I we the timer. I'm disgusted. I'm so disgusted with the timer because it's just something. It's just something that's really putting pressure on us. And it just means that Ultra could just, you know, try and just wear down the turns. I have to kick T-Bolt again, by the way. And, he, and the moment he, whenever he forces me through, that takes two seconds off the timer for me to make my move. And that's, that's a problem. There is a power. Okay. All right. Are we going to see him fully paralyzed at some point? That'll be interesting. Um, he is going to go into his blade form. He is going to go for a Shadow Claw. Uh, okay, I'm all right with that. Do I gamble? I think I think I could. No, I can't gamble the. I can't gamble it. I can't gamble the. The T bolt here. I have to go for roost. I have to go for roost. I have to go for roost. We've done well <laughs> milking the clock here, by the way. We've done very very well. And if he just if he gets fully paralyzed, like like so, big problem for him, as he went for the king shield there. That was fine because that gives me that gives me my Coco at full, which is very very nice. Um, it's very very nice. 
Very, very nice. Not gonna lie. Beautiful. Uh, I'm taking uh, T bolt. I was just, I was there realizing I was like chilling, touching my face. Like, oh, you gotta be on point here, touching your motor, your clicking buttons here, buddy. You gotta be on point, clicking your buttons. So, like, get a grip, mate. Like, don't be. Like, keep your finger on the pad, like, you know, keep it ready, keep it locked and loaded. The worst thing could happen, because we've seen it pop up on my, uh, on the video a few times, if my controller dies, we're fucked. Like, we are, we are fucked. Now, I'm just clicking T-Bolt again here, if, I swear, if my controller dies, oh, that has not gone through my mind. That, that, that has put fear in me. <laughs> that has put fear in me. Uh... Yeah, that, I, I'm kind of afraid of that. Okay, that's good damage. That's good. That, that's well, no, not good damage for us, but that's good. Well, it's good damage now. Like I do not have to roost next turn. I can just go for another T ball here. Big fear for him is, as I'm going to go for another one. Big fear for him is that can he live a hit? And if he, uh, sorry, and um, blade form. And if he gets paralyzed going for the King Shield again, this is, this is trouble. So he has to hope that he doesn't get paralyzed. He does not get paralyzed. That's cool. I'm just going to go T-Ball a couple of times. Just a couple of times. Get myself, you know, get, keep chipping away at this. Keep chipping away at this. Because you will get powered at some point and that's going to give me that leverage. To, um, you know, put him more within range. He's probably asking himself, what is going on? Like, you know, as we are, this is stolly as hell, but like, I, like I'm doing everything I can here, you guys. Like, I really, like, we were there as the battle went on. I was like, Coco's the only answer I have here for the rest of this, as he went for two King Shield there. Which is interesting. He may have misticked on that one, because I doubt he really wanted to do that. I really doubt he wanted to do that. Now, he might also want to be trying to stall me out with T-Bolts, because of Vaporeon. Bad news bears for him. I have full switch as well. I'm carrying the dual uh, electric stab. Because um, it was just really nice this week with Santa Conda. If Santa Conda was left, then we'll be full switch. And stab. That stab is much nicer. Has he run out? He's hardly run out of Shadow Claws. I'm sorry, but hardly. Shadow Claws like a pretty high PP move, so I doubt it. If he has run out of Shadow Claws, that, 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 that changes. That, that That's an interesting dynamic to be in for him, right? Because he's like, oh, we're. Or a bit like you know, I might be able to like just wear him down, like you know. But I'm just gonna keep spamming the table because he does not know I have the bolt switch. So I'm just gonna like just keep spamming the table, man. Just keep spamming the table. Keep spamming it. Beautiful. As he has probably gone for the shadow claw in this instance. Yeah, there we go. That is a horrible crit. Horrible crit, but. And that will that will force me to go for a roost this turn. Oh, do I, yeah, do, no, I have to. I have to keep my Coco healthy for this uh, Rotom. I have to keep it. And for, yeah, I just in general, I have to keep it healthy. So I'm just going to click roost. We have we have milked this timer to perfection. <laughs> By the way, just milked it. I'm like I am. This timer will not be will not beat me. My, the, my controller's dying, maybe, but no way am I gonna let this timer have the have its last lap for me. It ain't happened. If you wanna beat me, you need to kill me. You need to pick me off, right? That's how we're doing it, right? You're not beating me without picking me off, right? We are. We. I will grind you to dust. Right? I will just keep grind. I will keep annoying you until you say I am done with this, right? Right? I am going to just keep going. Now, hopefully. The timer does not come to the, by us. We've gone down to so 20 seconds. That sucks, right? But if we can just keep her lit, we're not doing too bad here. As he has gone for an offensive move here. He's within the red, boys and girls. He's in the red. No crit. Don't you dare crit me. Don't you dare. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's all I want. That's all I wanted to see was that damage. That's all I wanted to see. All I wanted to see, right? Now, do we go for the V, for the Volt Switch? I don't think we have to. I don't, I honestly do not think we have to. Or do I, because I think we're just keep going to the ball. I have seven of them. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm not, I, I don't need to. I have, I have you turned in on the road. Uh, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Uh, Tapu Coco. My Tapu Coco set, by the way. Let's take a look at that against Rotom. Rotom. Mo. Uh, and he's, he's offensive. As I have to be, I, I have to be all careful here, 
what I'm going to be doing. Leaf Storm. All depends on the damage. But U-Turn's doing plenty to at uh, Rotom. Plenty. And Rotom is actually sub 50%. This game is not over here, you guys. This game is not over. It's all about how quick I can click my buttons. I think Josh knows it. Fail. Thank you. Die. On it, please. Die. Die. Just die. Just... Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck right off, buddy. Fuck right off. Right, I think he has to... I think he might go for the Shadow Snake here. I am just... I'm, I'm literally spamming the A button on my controller. I'm like... Fucking hurry up. Thank you! Right. About time we saw another one of them. But this thing should be dead. Depending on what comes in here next. We either U-turn or we full switch. Or T-Bolt. This is no... By no means this is over, ladies and gentlemen. By no means this is over. No means. By no means. This is... What do you do? What do you do, Josh? What do you do? You're going to go out to this thing. This thing's so... Yeah, fine. 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 Whatever, man. Whatever. You turn. You turn. Thunderbolt. GG. You turn. Thunderbolt. GG. That's all we got to do. We have 13 seconds. Do not be some stupid... Do not be, do not do something stupid here, alright? You turn. You turn. You turn. Yes! This is this is it! This is it! This is it! Come on! We're gonna grab it! You thought it was over! You all thought! I guarantee you're watching this video right now! And you all thought this was over! You saw the damage you did! You saw where I was at the time, and I was like, Nana, Nana, we Coco still has it! I knew we still had it! I just knew it! And then yeah. Don't care. Is Rocks going to kill you? Is Rocks going to... Yes! Come on, people! Show me it! Yes! That's how it's done! Beautiful! That is it! Give me that one, Owen! Give it to me! It's been so long! Give it! Yes! Yes! Beautiful stuff! GG, Josh! I just had a feeling with the way the damage went. When we got rid of that Sanaconda, I just had a feeling... This could be it because the Coco is still healthy. And it was, all, it was just the timer I was worried about, but screw that timer. Screw, bang, 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 bang. We were kicking them buttons like there was nobody's business. And we pick up that 1-0 win. Come up the hour, come up the man. For, right now, right, if you're watching this, I want you spamming that UBL Twitter. Weeks two to eight, null and void. Only weeks one and two matter. That's that's all that's all you guys need to worry about. Weeks one and two matter. I am taking that. I am taking that's the that's probably our, that is easily our best performance in the UBL this season. And the prep was on point. Shout out to Root for giving me uh telling me that Coco needs to be physical defensive to deal with the Zapdos because I was really unsure about it when I first looked at it with the Stomp and Tantrum. I was very worried that, that was going to be the case, but no, 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 no. It worked a treat. It worked a treat. But yeah, GG Josh, great game, man. Uh, definitely check out his channel. Unfortunately, even though that's an awesome win, we're, that's the end of our UBL season. We're done and dusted. We didn't make playoffs, unfortunately, because we have a shitty record, but it is what it is. I will have a recap, uh, sorry, a review of FIFA and UBL coming out in next week, I'd say, talking through how I thought both leagues went. Make sure you guys check that out. Really looking forward to showing you guys what it is. Battery just went on the screen, they're saying it died. One of my controllers. No joke, when I said that could be an issue, thank God we got that battle done inside like those last couple of minutes. Otherwise, we were done. So, whoo! Close call. But yeah, guys, if you liked today's video, please click like button down below for me. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please click that subscribe button. If you're not following me over on Twitch, follow me over on Twitch. We're doing Pokemon, we do draft league battles, watch alongs, Pokemon showdown, and Wi Fi battles. So definitely follow me over there if you're not already. Link to that is in the description down below. And on that note, I'm going to get on about here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.